look, we're living in one of the best seasons in all of baseball. With dudes being on pace to hit plus 60 home runs for the first time since 2001. And that's not even including the fact that there's a guy like Shohei Otani out here who's doing things that haven't been done for nearly 100 years. Especially when we're talking about the way he's been able to hit and pitch at the same time. Plus, all of the exciting and major deals that went down at the trade deadline, with the headliner being Juan Soto landing in San Diego. But that hasn't gone too well, so. <laughs> Sorry, San Diego fans. And I haven't even mentioned the best part of the season, which is the fact that the AL East is not only looking like the best division in baseball, but maybe the best division of all time. With the worst team in the division, Boston Red Sox, having a record of 57-59 and 59 at the time of this recording, leaving them at around 5 games out of the playoffs, with like 50 plus games left to go, and it's very possible for them to sneak in at this point. I'm also going to cover how every team in this division has performed so far, and just stay tuned till the end of the video where I talk each team's chances at reaching the World Series. But before I do, don't forget to pause the video so you can like and subscribe to the channel because the more interactions the better, you know? Anyway, let's get back to it. Okay, let's start it off with the division leaders themselves, the New York Yankees. Talk about a team who had a phenomenal, possibly record-breaking season by the end of it. But if we're going to talk about the Yankees season, we got to go all the way back to April, beginning of the season where the Yankees got off to a bang with a 15-6 and six record throughout the month, right? And proof that this division is so strong is due to the fact that five of the six losses that they got came to the hands of their division rivals. Oh, but they play their division more often. Don't care. Don't care. And from mid-April to mid-May, the New York Yankees caught fire, going from 8-6 and six to 28 and 9. That's right, they got 20 wins in 23 games. But if you thought the Yankees were great then, ooh, you are so mistaken. Because June was their month. In the sense that not only did they have a 9 game winning streak during that month, but they also had one of, if not the best record in baseball that month, going 22 and 6. And that's thanks a lot in part to the pitching staff, who only allowed more than five runs in three games that month. With pitchers like James Tallion and Michael King doubling their win totals. And that's not even mentioning how important of a factor Clayton Holmes was, considering the fact that Holmes was able to earn eight saves in June alone. But then came what could be considered by many as the Yankees' decline for the 2022 season. As in the months of July and August, they've totaled about a record of 16 wins and 22 losses as of the recording. It's going to change because like the, the video takes a little minute to make. But anyway, this would bring us to present day, or at least almost present day, where the Yankees are now have a record of 72 and 43, which is like top five in the league. It's pretty good. Oh, did you think I was going to end the entire Yankees section? without talking about the type of year Aaron Judge is having? <sighs> Dude is having an MVP-esque year. Because not only is he a stud on the defensive end of the field, but he's leading the league in home runs at 46, with second place having around like 12 less than that. And that ain't even the only stat he's leading in. Because Judge is also like first place in RBIs this season, and was the first player to reach 100 ribbies. Oh yeah, and he's also got the most hits on the team, so kinda caring. But before we move on to the Blue Jays, let me tip my cap to Garrett Cole, who's got the second most strikeouts in the league right now, and has been able to pitch the most innings on the team by far. Okay, okay. Let's get to the second best team in the division, in the Toronto Blue Jays, who, just like the Yankees, got off to a smoking start in the season, ending April with a record of 14-8, and eight, with Mr. Alex Manoa snagging up four wins in the first month, while managing to give up like four earned runs in 25 innings pitched. But the next three months wouldn't be as kind to the squad, 
as most of the months ended with a record of either 15 and 13 or 14 and 12 which isn't bad at all but compared to that first month it's definitely a downgrade anyway after two weeks into august they're having a very average-esque month but i have still managed to gather a record of 60 plus wins in like 110 game span and that's in thanks to team leader in rbis and hits and 2022 All-Star Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And I just want to mention the, the massive improvement this guy in his third year has taken. In first-time All-Star, Alejandro Kirk. Dude's got a plus 300 batting average. I mean, dude, catcher's kind of goaded. Like, he's pretty cool. And it's also time to talk about the most southest team in the division. Is that a word? Who cares? the tampa bay rays this is a team of dogs love these guys unlike the first two teams these guys never really had one of those crazy good months in fact every month it was like the team had ended with one or two more wins than they had losses but after a four month period that starts to add up and by the time they reached august they had a record of 54 and 48 and while in august They've maintained a solid record where like the wins and losses are about the same. Mainly due to the fact that they haven't been shut out this month. At least, not yet. And that's in part to a little Randy Yandy combo with Randy Arozarena and Yandy Diaz. Yandy Diaz leading the entire team in nearly all of the batting stats so far. With Yandy having the best batting average on and on base percentage on the team, while Randy has the most home runs, RBIs, and hits on the team. And while the offense is carried by two separate people, the same can't be said for the pitching side of things, where it's pretty evident as to who the guy is on that team. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, let me introduce you to Shane McLannan, the guy with the fifth best ERA in the league. In his second season. Oh, and I haven't given him all his flowers yet. The dude has the best whip in the league at 0.87 while leading his team in wins, ERA, and strikeouts. The Orioles. You know what? If you're going to trade a fan favorite away like Trey Mancini for almost nothing, then you don't deserve to be talked about. In fact, screw the Orioles. And they're 10 fans or whatever. For the sake of audience retention, we'll just skip over it. You're welcome. Well, actually, as a first-time viewer, it puts a bad taste in my mouth with the fact that you just skipped over a team. Bitch, I don't care. Screw the Oreos. They don't deserve to be talked about. Anyway, time for the Red Sox. This team, last place in the division, in the so-called best division by me, uh, they're probably the best last place team out there. As I mentioned earlier, they're less than five games out of a playoff spot in large part due to how they played in June, where they managed to lose only six games throughout the entire 30 days. And they were also able to do so because of how the pitching staff performed for the Sox, with starting pitchers like Nick Pavetta leading the way for his club as he was able to rack up four wins in that span. And not only that, but Pavetta has been Boston's ace like the entire season as he leads his squad in dubs, ERAs, and strikeouts. But he wasn't the only guy on the mound to put in work during that red hot stretch in June as reliever Tan Tanner Hook would get his first six saves during June while making a name for himself. But there are two sides to baseball. And when it comes to the offensive side of, of baseball, the Boston Red Sox need only two men. One being Ironman Xander Bogarts, who's played in the most games this season when wearing a Red Sox uni, and he leads the team in hits. But more impressively, on base percentage. Dude's played the most amount of games and he has the best on base percentage. Mind blown. And next is the guy who I'm pretty sure you saw on the cover. That's right, Rafael Devers. Dude's been a beast this season, earning an all-star nod alongside fellow teammates J.D. Martinez and Xander. 
as Devers has provided the most for the club offensively as he leads the team in not only batting average but also home runs and RBIs making it pretty clear as to why he has the best war on the team. Now let's get to what you've all been waiting for if you've lasted this long in the video and that is each team's odds at reaching the World Series. Let's start with the worst odds. And I think it's pretty obvious where I'm going here. That's right. I have the Baltimore Oreos coming in last place with a ranking of 0% odds. You should have kept Trey Mancini. Screw you guys. Following suit, I have what many could consider being a controversial de de decision. Sorry. I have the Tampa Bay Rays coming in at 4th place in the rankings with 10% odds. Just because offensively, they're pretty weak. With not a single batter coming in at a higher war than 2.5. And besides Yandy and Randy, there haven't been too much hitting of baseballs going on over there. Okay, let's get to the team with the third best odds of reaching the World Series in the division in my eyes. That being the Red Sox. And as much as I praise them for having that streak in the month of June, that seems to be their downfall as the team has appeared to be very streaky throughout the season. Plus, pitching-wise, the staff isn't all too deep, with the majority of starting pitchers having a pretty high ERA. So I'm giving them a solid 15% chance of reaching the World Series. Still kind of high. And if you haven't guessed what's coming next by now, then you must not be paying attention, because the order of first and second are pretty obvious here. But I'll tell you anyway. In second place, I have the Toronto Blue Jays with the second best odds of reaching the World Series in the division, of course. Those odds being 40%. And yeah, I know that's a massive increase from the previous two teams and the Orioles. But that's mainly due to the fact that this team has shown to be pretty strong on both sides of the field. And this leaves us with one team. Can't believe I have to spell this out for you, but that's right. I have the New York Yankees coming in at the highest odds of reaching the World Series, with odds of about 80%. That's, that's, that's really high. And I know what you're saying. Well, why? And that's just because I see this team as the best in the AL. There's nothing more to it. Okay, now that was a long one. But I like how the video came out overall. I had fun time making it. I might make this about, make the same thing with like football-esque. And so, anyway, catch y'all later. Bye-bye.